Hello, my name is Regina M. Dick with Good News Broadcasting and Multimedia. You can find us at gnbm.org. We are an online Christian news organization designed to spread the good news gospel of Jesus Christ around the world via modern multimedia technology. Good News Broadcasting and Multimedia sponsors Prayer Warriors 365, an online mission to bring prayer warriors together. An effective prayer warrior is one who, through their personal walk with Jesus Christ, find truth and freedom in the fullness of salvation. This one day at a time, 365 day a year journey, through the power of the Holy Spirit, produces a completeness in Christ, putting on the full armor of God. This completeness produces powerful and effective intercessory prayer, bringing victory in every area of our lives. Prayer Warriors 365 is created to encourage, support, and unite Christians in the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ as we join together in prayer, creating a tidal wave, ripple effect, impacting our personal lives, families, communities, nations, and the world, bringing unity and purpose for the Kingdom of God. Live broadcasting episodes can be found at blogtalkradio.com forward slash prayer warriors 365. You can also find us on YouTube. You can at youtube.com forward slash prayer warriors 365 or youtube.com forward slash gnbmorg. Please go to either one of these channels and subscribe. This is how you can support us. Support us by subscribing to either channel, either GNBMORG or Prayer Warriors 365, and also share. Get the word out. Let others know that we are coming together in prayer. We also have a morning program, Armor Up AM, that is also at Blog Talk Radio. You can go there Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Join us. We also would like to offer a special thanks for our Prayer Warrior graphics. They were created by Bill Osborne. You can find these warrior graphics at art.billosborne.com. This is Day 18, The Gift of Change. The one thing that is constant is change. Let's talk a little bit about the change for the worst. Number one, change is coming exponentially in every area of our lives in these days, which creates uncertainty and anxiety. You're experiencing probably in your own life some uh, uncertainty with the changes in the weather as quickly as they are, changes in uh, geopolitical instability, global economic changes, record-breaking climactic events, rapid technological change, and even community and personal uncertainty. So it's from the global uh, change that we're experiencing all the way down into our personal lives. And this is what is happening in these days. So it's a little bit uncertain, causing anxiety. So as fear of change mounts, we can become discouraged and also lose heart. And that's not what God, not what God calls us to do. So now, more than ever, we need more of a solid, steady foundation. If we do not, we get shaken. Whether we agree or not, or believe it or not, change is inevitable. If we choose to ignore the prodding, the warnings or godly advice, the change that we do encounter will never ultimately be for the better. In Proverbs 14:12, it says, There is a way which seems right to a man and appears straight before him, but at the end it is the way of death. So let's take a look at change a little bit. We can always try change in our lives, change of jobs, change of locations, changing our looks, changing even our spouses to make us feel better. And that's the key, feel better. Feeling, if we act on our feeling and make our choices based on feeling, guess what? We end up getting in trouble just about every time. So change is happening. What do we do about it? 
while we may experience some temporary relief from maybe changing jobs or changing locations or even changing our looks or our spouse, the problem still remains that we are not understanding the real heart of the issue. So it's something that there is a root to it and it has to do with spiritual. It is at the heart that we find the root cause which is spiritual. This requiring us to go beyond self. Because think about it. When we're changing jobs and changing locations, it's trying to make us feel better. And guess what? We get to that place and the grass is not always greener on the other side. And we still have to mow the grass over there. We still have to deal with the issues that might involve a changing of jobs or locations or spouses or whatever it might be. So what we have to do is learn to figure out what really is the problem here. There's something in me that needs some solidity that no matter where I'm at, I'm comfortable. No matter with who I'm with or how I look or what, where I, I may change uh, in positions or careers, I'm steady. I'm peaceful. I have something that is a foundation that keeps me steady no matter what. And this is very important that we have to learn this in ourselves so as our times that we're in right now begin to change and begin to change at a more rapid pace then we are steady. We can, because we know who our rock is. We know what our rock is and our foundation. So, insanity it has been described as doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results each time. Uh, when I first heard this, I thought, wow, that is incredible. That is so true. I never even realized it. And I actually felt like I was on a merry-go-round, going around and around, and my life was just spinning out of control. Uh, I found out this particular quote actually came from Albert Einstein. The definition of a sanity has been defined as wholeness of mind, making decisions based on the truth. So, number three, it is up to us as to how many times we go around the same mountain. And that is a saying that a lot of Christians have uh, been using because we've heard it out there. And it actually comes from the story of the Israelites and in Deuteronomy 1 2 it says it is only a 11 day journey from Horeb to the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea on Canaan's border yet Israel took 40 years to get beyond it what should have taken 11 days the Israelites took 40 years going around the same mountain to get to the promised land is that what we're called to do? Is that what we want? In Deuteronomy 2.3, the Amplified Version also, it says, You have roamed around this mountain country long enough. Turn northward. Enough's enough. How long do we want to keep going around the same mountain, spinning on the same merry-go-round, with our life getting totally out of control? At what point do we say, we want better. We want the abundant life. God has a plan. In Philippians 1.6 it says, I'm sure that God who began the good work within you will keep right on helping you grow in his grace until his task within you is finally finished on that day when Jesus returns. Change for the best Number one, a change for the best is the gift of change. It is a gift that brings true repentance and a change from the old man to the new man. Repentance means change. And to try to understand going from the old man to the new man is a very difficult concept unless you've actually walked through this experience. When we ask the Lord into our life, that is the beginning process, saying that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are saved. 
But there is a process of changing from the old man, in other words, the old way of understanding, into the new man, a new way of understanding through Christ's perspective, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask the Holy Spirit into our lives. We receive direction, teaching from the Holy Spirit as we walk through our journey called life. That is a process that can only be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is something that we cannot do on our own. And we can ev- not even understand this change that happens. Something that we can't pretend or try to make happen or try to read about and understand to make it happen in ourselves. It can only be done by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's the gift of change. That is the good news. So in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, made part of Christ by believing in Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old, previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the new and fresh has come. In other words, we move from the world belief system and what we understand of this world into the kingdom of God. A whole different understanding and perspective. That is the gift of change. It takes our agreement, our yes, our turning from sin to surrender to Christ, to receive this simple but most profound gift. It is something that is simple but not easy. In other words, we have to release our flesh more and more to the direction of the Holy Spirit by being obedient, by doing things in our day-to-day that may be uncomfortable, but we just obey. We go beyond our flesh beyond our understanding and we trust in Christ we believe we trust we walk that one day at a time so once we receive this change our foundation is set in the cornerstone the cornerstone meaning Jesus Christ so that no matter what comes we are not shaken and that's why this is so very important to be able to walk through this process of change, the gift of change, by simply saying yes, turning our lives over to the Lord, listening to the Holy Spirit, in a one day at a time opportunity. This is something not that just doesn't automatically happen. It is a process. It is a refinement. And you'll hear the words sanctification, justification, So we go from sanctification, we're justified, and we're glorified. But what it is, is again the changing. And it is a process of really connecting with the Holy Spirit, walking in the Spirit, walking with Christ in our own personal lives very important, extremely important. In Matthew 7, 24 through 27, it says, so that everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, meaning prudent, practical, and wise man who has built his house upon the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. The rock is Jesus Christ. It goes on and it says, And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a stupid or foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house. And it fell and great and complete was the fall of it. That is why it is so very important, especially in these days where change is happening exponentially, that we get grounded 
in the truth we get grounded in Jesus Christ because as the floods of change the tidal waves of change are coming upon us are we going to be solid and steady peaceful trusting in God are we going to get shaken full of fear making wrong decisions and choices and falling and those around us falling the choice is ours we're doing it we're coming together those who believe in Jesus Christ we're standing firm standing steady number two this is the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ which is the good news the fight being standing in faith in Jesus Christ because you have an opponent you have this world belief system you have an enemy who wants to take us off course who wants to keep us from the fullness that is Jesus Christ through deception only deception we still have a choice that's why it is important that we keep moving forward and getting that relationship with the Holy Spirit with the Lord and being teachable through the power of the Holy Spirit and being able to discern and receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit which includes discernment which includes wisdom and knowledge and prophecy and healing and miracles speaking in tongues interpretation of tongues all of these gifts are available to us through the power of the Holy Spirit that is the good news so that we can fight that good fight of faith as you're seeing especially if you're Christian the resistance that we're getting in many different areas just saying the name Jesus has connotations and problems with it in these days he is calling us out of the darkness and into the light we are never alone he never leaves us or forsakes us no matter how bad it may seem or it may get he will never leave us or never forsake us this is a lifelong journey the journey is called life in the fullness the completeness of salvation and this is where a lot of Christians will miss it they'll jump on board they'll get that born again experience and even receive the Holy Spirit and they feel wow I'm on fire but then they lose it because they don't understand this is a lifelong process one day at a time in the fullness of salvation we were saved but we still have a process that we have to go through that's where a lot of people are really missing the boat so if you're that person jump back on get in line take that one day at a time surrender in that one day because what we're learning is we're being in the present in God's presence that's this day rather than being bound by things of the past we can find freedom through the power of the Holy Spirit through repentance through atonement and and amends or whatever it might be to heal the past so that we have freedom from anything that might be in the past holding us in bondage staying in the present getting our healing so that it does not affect our future and also being in the present not projecting in the future worried anxious about what's going to happen next in fear because remember in God's kingdom there is no time we have to go through the process of time but how do we do that we do that by being in the present in God's presence and we're learning all the time and he gives us enough grace for that one day at a time it is a one day at a time proposition very simple but we are not even truly able to understand it without the guidance of the Holy Spirit this is a gift of change that is a gift with an amazing ripple effect we are barely cognizant of just how we do affect others around us and our sphere of influence until we begin to change 
we are profoundly connected with others not even just in our own sphere of influence but all over the world and we do make a difference be it good or bad in the lives of others so it's not just about us it's about way beyond those around us in our sphere of influence those that are connected to those around us and so on and so on that is a ripple effect a major ripple effect your life does make a difference and you have an enemy that wants you to believe that your life is worth anything guess what it is it is important to the Lord it is important to God it is important to fellow Christian true believers you are important to God you are important to others who believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Romans 12 5 it says so we numerous as we are are one body in Christ we are part of the Messiah and individually we are parts of one another mutually dependent on one another see the connection so if we choose life it's like throwing a pebble in the pond it's a ripple effect and it goes on so your choices make a major difference in that ripple effect and for those around you so we're not called to self we're called to something much bigger than just self. This ripple effect produces its own series of trials. Thus we stay in close connection with Christ through the Holy Spirit and truly experience just how it really is. And what this is, is as we start finding our relationship with the Lord, it does produce a ripple effect and those around us may feel uncomfortable they may have been used to dealing with us in a certain way and it makes them them uncomfortable until they get to through that process of being able to understand what God is doing that is why it's very important to remain in that relationship with the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit so you can help that relative or that brother or sister or whoever it might be that spouse that child uh, that connection that you have that doesn't quite understand what's going on and through that relationship with the Lord you realize wow I really truly am affecting this person and they may not understand at first but God will give you insight that's why it is extremely important to remain in that close relationship with the Holy Spirit so that he guides you he leads you he gives you the words to say he gives you insight to the hearts of others it's important it is a one day at a time lifelong walk through life in 1 Peter 2 9 it says but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his possession, his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. There is no way that anyone in this world, I don't care how smart they are, how intelligent they may have, the IQ, the Nobel Peace Prize, the understanding of mathematics, who can grasp this until they have that relationship with Jesus Christ. It is for those who come to that place and say, Lord, I choose you. I choose life. Prayer Warriors 365, we have our Armor Up AM morning program where we pray first thing in the morning. It's at blogtalkradio.com forward slash prayer warriors 365, Monday through Friday at from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. We just began this and please join us. This is a 
process of coming together one day at a time during the week and looking at current events and figuring out what is our position as prayer warriors and to come together in prayer for our personal lives, for our community, for our nation, and for the world. So join us, prayer warriors. This is the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ.